give you the glory, Lord. We worship you, Heavenly Father. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Holy Spirit. We honor you, O Lord, our God. You are the Spirit of glory. You are the Spirit of the Lord. You are the Spirit of wisdom. You are the Spirit of understanding. You are the Spirit of counsel. You are the Spirit of might. You are the Spirit of knowledge. You are the Spirit of the fear of the Lord. The Spirit of prophecy is who you are. The Spirit of glory is who you are. The Spirit of life is who you are. The Spirit of holiness is who you are. The Spirit of truth is who you are. The sweet Spirit is who you are. The good Spirit is who you are. The eternal Spirit is who you are. The Spirit of revelation. The Spirit of glory. The Spirit of burning. The Spirit of the Lord God. The power of the highest. The breath of the Almighty. The Comforter is who you are. The Intercessor. The Stand by. The Paracletos is who you are. Oh, the Comforter. The Advocate. We love you. We honor you. We worship you, the Holy Ghost. Mm, how you anointed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with you and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. For God was with me. You are the spirit of life. I ask you here now, Lord, breathe life into somebody's spirit. Breathe life into somebody's soul. Breathe life into somebody's body. Breathe life into somebody's spirit. Quicken the gift. Quicken the gift. Let that be your prayer here now that the Holy Spirit, the spirit of life, breathe life in you and quicken every spiritual gift that God has deposited in you to become a light. Spirit of the Lord, we ask you that you may breathe life into the lives of your people, into their gift. May you stir up the gift in them. May you stir up the talent in them. May you stir up the spiritual gift in them. May you stir up the spiritual gift. May you sharpen their hearing. May you sharpen their seeing. May you sharpen the communication all from the realm of the spirit into their lives by the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Father and pray may the Holy Spirit breathe life in the gift in the gift in the gift let somebody oh, hearing be sharpened let somebody seeing be sharpened may you begin to receive divine communications with clarity in the name of Jesus when you sleep may there be divine visitation in dreams in a visions by the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus quickening quickening may the voice of the Holy Ghost be clear may the voice of the Holy Ghost be clear it shall come to pass in the latter days says the Lord that I will pour out my spirit on all of flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your young men shall see visions your old men shall dream dreams let it be so let the gift be stirred up. May you see in the spirit and not walk blind. May you hear in the spirit and not walk deaf by the Holy Spirit. Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord. Every one of them, our children, every one of them, every man, every woman. Now I pray for the quickening by the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Oh, we are the temple of God. The dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. How can we not hear you? How can we not be led by you? How we can we not recognize your leading? We pray may you quicken our inner man that your voice be clear, that the seeing be clear, 
that there be diverse encounters by your people that uh, you may bring angelic encounters into the lives of your people that your voice be real into the lives of your people that you may bring insight revelation oh spirit of revelation into the lives of your people may you illuminate somebody may they be like a bulb in the mind with innovation with godly ideas in the name of jesus may their voice be clear and say this is the way going to it in the name of jesus after this, they are fasted and minister to the lord the holy spirit to say may your audible voice lord be clear to the lives of your people in the name of jesus receive worship receive praise we ask you for the grace of prayer and sensitivity of our spirit man to your leading O oh, spirit of the lord we love you we honor you we worship you holy ghost in jesus name amen amen hallelujah Glory to the Lord. We continuing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. When is our pastor back? Please, in the name of Jesus. Uh, last Sunday we shared, uh, we started sharing on this topic, and by God's grace, we're looking at part two here as we conclude. Part one, uh, uh, we we're, we're dealing with dimensions. Of intercession and we talked about part one one of the dimension of intercession you are like a priest representing people representing your family representing the church the city the nation before the Lord making prayer for God to intervene in their lives in the name of Jesus hallelujah as we say by nature human being a self-centered human being because of the Adamic nature how we came about if you are not opening up and yielding to the leading of God the Adamic nature can still have influence and it brought self-centeredness it brought selfishness so in the training as immature as god's people one of the way of indication that this person is maturing they start entering a sphere of being selfless hallelujah in the name of jesus and the other dimension of intercession that it can manifest with we i am referred to it as prophetic prophetic intercession there are times where revelation comes from the lord into your lives be it by prophecy be it by a scripture that has stood out is no longer logos it has become a rema word through be it can come through dreams visions or picture even here now your eyes can flip and you see in the spirit and it closes again revelation encounters from the lord divorce communication can come to you from the lord to you but what do you do with that because everything we receive from the realm of the spirit demand action and from pro prophetic intercession when revelation that are positive have come into your life they have they demand action and one of the main action that it demand it is called prayer and intercession somebody say amen hallelujah it demand that there will be time where you will go and seek the lord in prayer for your personal matters let me tell to you ministers here there will be time where you are praying lord i'm seeking your face on this matter but in the sovereignty of god instead of answering about your matter is giving you revelation about somebody else hallelujah because God is also training you to see if you will still be self-centered or you will be selfless. I have sought your face, but you brought this revelation. It means now God wants me to partner with him for what he has brought, which is positive, to come to pass. Because I have yielded to that, my matter is attended to. Because God is also training me to mature. One of the way of maturing that said this person has matured spiritually, they start becoming selfless, moving from being self-centered to becoming selfless. Hallelujah. 
I don't know what I am saying. It has happened to you. You are praying for this, but God is giving you revelation about Mfundis. Amen. Now, when you say, Lord, I am more on my work, but God is giving you revelation about Mfundis. God is saying, partner with him. Let me pray. Let's back up. Let us support him in prayer. But if you think in your mind, no, he's a man of prayer, so he will pray. Lord, I intervene in my work. You have missed it. Though what you are praying is scripturally based, but it's not what God is saying to you by that time. Hallelujah. You have missed that. So prophetic intercession is we have received positive revelation from the Lord. We respond by prayer and intercession to ensure manifestation in the physical about what God has said concerning your life, your children, your family, the church, the city, the nation in the name of Jesus. I'm saying that to say there are times as well. We are already in part two now. You can write the third dimension. The third dimension, I'm calling it a watchman. A watchman who intercedes. A watchman who intercedes. There are times where the revelation is not positive. We'll get there shortly. You can write number three as we go into part two. Number three dimension of intercession. You are like a watchman. Hallelujah. Watchmen, they build prayer edges that guard and protect individuals, families, churches, cities, nations, businesses through their prayers. How we together? I want you to write it down so we can run. That when you are a watchman, one of the assignments of a watchman is to build spiritual edges boundaries for protecting individuals, families, churches, the nation, the, the, your children against devices and agenda of darkness in the name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter two, uh, 62, we've read it shortly, uh, we read it not long again. We, re we are reading here now, Isaiah 62 verse 6 says, I have set watchmen one of the assignments of watchmen is to protect. I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. Hallelujah. You will make mention of the Lord. Do not keep silent. By prayer, they are... They are becoming vigilant. They are like security guards. There is a dimension in intercession, which is you are like a security guard, a watchman. By prayer, building walls of protection around people against attacks. In the name.
X and brother Y, that the accident shall not take place in the name of Jesus. As a child of God, I decree and declare by the power in the blood of Jesus, that accident is here by cancer, intercepted, nullified. It shall not take place in the name of Jesus. The Lord shall preserve sister X. The Lord shall preserve brother Y. In the name of Jesus, let the promises of God, positive, wonderful promises of God, be made manifest into their lives in the name of Jesus. When I am doing that, I am partnering with God. He has found a friend that he can work with on earth. Because we say, Lord, use me. Hey, when you say use me, that prayer, please don't pray it because you have heard somebody praying it. Because say, Lord, use me. I want to be used by God. Huh? Are you sure? Hallelujah. Lord, use me, my tree. Are you sure? Because part of the training for God to use you and entrust you with his power, he entrusts you with, to walk in mightily, in gift, to walk in power. God has to reach a point where of trusting you. And one of the way of processing you is to move you from being self-centered to being selfless so that whatever he reveal, you partner with him. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So when a positive revelation comes, it is not, uh, rather, when a negative revelation comes, last Sunday we dealt with the positive one. When a negative revelation comes to you as a, a, in a dream, in a vision, hallelujah. By negative meaning it's, a, it, it's something bad. You yourself don't want it to happen. When it's an accident, it's something bad. When somebody is about to lose a job, it's something bad. That this one is about to fall sick, is something bad. It's bad because it is against the promises of God for our lives. Hallelujah. Because the Bible he is the determiner. He has shown that God wants you to have life and have it more abundantly. But why am I seeing you in pain? And the revelation is coming like that. I need to counter that. Because in the realm of the spirit, there is no time. God, because of his love for you and I, brings revelation so that we can respond before the appointed time of the manifestation. When it's negative, you have the power to nullify it in the name of Jesus. When it's positive, you have the power to agree with God for that to come to pass in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So as a watchman, as a result, you are like security guards. And this I'm talking about from spiritual perspective. Protecting others through prayers. You are building 45 walls of protection around the individual, around families, around leaders, around churches. So that the devices of the enemy that are planned against their life are not materialized. Are not coming to pass in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It shall not stand, Isaiah 7, 7 say, neither come to pass. So you stand by your authority according to the word of God. Because these things is negative, opposing the word of God. But God has brought it to my mind that this is what is, up, is about to happen for this person. I have to respond. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Glory to the Lord. The watchman has to respond in the name of Jesus. The watchman prevent upcoming enemies attack from coming to pass because of what you get vital information to report danger and warn the people through so that those things do not come to pass. Hallelujah. Level one, level two, please hear. You will wake up or oh, ahead in a, a nightmare or a dream about that person or about my teacher. It's not right. It's not a good dream. That information is not to stay at information level only. It has to take you into action. The more you respond to those, the more God starts entrusting you with many other things because you are responding. Hallelujah. And in the processing of God, of a human being, some of the information that will come because God is training you will not be about you. Hallelujah. Will you have the capacity 
Because the Lord used me. You have the capacity when God gives you this information. This one, they are about to go through a rough period. The business, I'm seeing a wind blowing whatever that they are having. Whom marriage can eat up quickly as if they never got married in the first place. Whose business can be scattered. Whose church can be scattered because the agenda of the church is to depopulate the kingdom of darkness and grow people into what God has designed them to be. That agenda is not pleasing to the devil. So he has to operate to see how does he to stop it. But for watchmen, mature believers, when you have those revelations, you respond by prayer, by intercession, in, in, at other times by even with fasting to ensure that thing doesn't come to pass in the name of Jesus. Glory to the Lord. So we say you are like a security guard to intercept the enemy attack, to cancel negative revelations from manifesting in the person's life, from coming to pass in the name of Jesus. That dimension I am referring to as you are a watchman because one of the roles of the watchman is to keep guard, to safeguard, to protect against an enemy, against a robber, against Whoever is trying to come and, and kill these things, I have to respond in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The next one before we pray. There are times, one of the dimensions of intercession that will manifest, I am referring to as warfare. Intercession. Warfare. In the name of Jesus. Warfare. Glory to the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Please write this down. In the warfare here, before we explain further, I need you to write down. There are times you will receive strategies from the Lord on how to overcome a certain work of darkness so that breakthroughs are released. There are times you will receive strategies Warfare strategies that you need to implement in order to overthrow the power of darkness and release breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. You will see, for instance, in the book of Samuel, when David came and find they have stolen everything. They have scattered. They have taken their wives. They have taken their children. They have taken everything. When they cry and there were no more strength to cry. And now people are turning toward David wanting now to attack David. There was a time now he requested a ethod and the, the, garment, the, 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 the garment of the priest so that 
that he, he went and inquired from the Lord. Hallelujah. One of the ways, one of the strategy of warfare is to inquire from the Lord. Finding out what is going on. And when he's finding out, the Lord told David, pursue and you shall surely overtake and recover all. So he had the confidence to pursue and go and recover all. In the Old Testament, as we have said before and saying it again, their war was physical wars. In the New Testament, our war are spiritual war. They utilize physical strategy. We are utilizing spiritual strategy. The Lord backed them up. The Lord is backing us up. In the name of Jesus. They utilize physical weapons. They fight physically with physical weapons. We are fighting spiritually, utilizing spiritual weapons. When I am calling for the fire of God, by God's grace, at one stage, your eyes can open for you to see in the realm of the spirit what is happening. But the fire is not a physical fire. Their fire might have descended physically. The spear, take the hold of the spear and javelin those are physical weapons to fight. They were fighting physically. But here now is a spiritual. The sword of the Lord is spiritual. The fire of God is spiritual. The blood of Jesus is not a physical blood that you are invoking. You are not seeing the blood. But why is it working? Because it's a spiritual weapon. Hallelujah. Don't you call by the blood of Jesus, let this, this be cancer. But the blood, when even the blood was shed, you were not there. Your grandfather was not there. Well, you believe by faith that it has become now your weapon of war. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. It has become now the weapon of war. When you are invoking to enough understanding, then it works for you in the name of of Jesus. So warfare, the intention of warfare is to defeat the work of darkness and release breakthroughs. Hallelujah. You understand by breakthrough, it can be marriage, it can be salvation just to break up. The city open up and there is massive salvation, massive discipleship of people so that they may have a relationship with God. We are releasing that. So God may give us strategy for this city, pray like this. For what you are going through, pray like that. In the name of Jesus, when you stand according to what God has spoken, there is be a release. Is a strategy. I waited upon the Lord many years ago. I don't know if it's over 20. Maybe around 20 years ago, 22 years ago. I have told you my story. It's a, there is a pain. It's a struggle. Why are we struggling like this from this bloodline? Nothing is working. There is recurring of negative pattern. Recurring of a negative circle. What is going on? Until one day a revelation through the word of God came. Hallelujah. Because God, in his sovereignty, he wrote one particular verse in the Bible only for me. And I have the privilege to quote it to you. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpent and in scorpion and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke 10, 19. Because now that become my weapon of war. My strategy, God is utilizing what is the frustration from the foundational powers. What is frustrating you from the bloodline. Look what I have given you. So stand. Then I start thinking. When I see negative cycle, the Lord has given me authority over this. When I see a negative pattern, the Lord has given me authority over this. When I see people struggling in marriage, I know we'll get married in the future. The Lord has given me authority over this. I begin to wrestle and fight with that scripture because it was personal. And victory came in the name of Jesus. Victory came in the name of Jesus. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wars. Verse 11 of the devil. The strategies of the devil. The schemes of the devil. That you may be able to stand against that. Why? Because there is a war going on. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, 
They fought physically. We are fighting spiritually. Hallelujah. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. This is not my boss. This is not my mother-in-law. This is not my uncle. This is not my neighbor. He is it's not flesh and blood. But we are wrestling. We are fighting. We are in war. And the war is against these entities that are empowering this war called principalities of the kingdom of darkness, powers of the kingdom of darkness, rulers of darkness of this age, and spiritual of host of wickedness in the heavenly places. They have weapons, they form strategy, they form tools, they form to attack God's people. But God's people have to rise up and fight in the name of Jesus because other things will not come to you just like that on a silver platter. Hallelujah. They have, we have to fight because the moment you fight according to what God is empowering you with and they release breakthrough, you begin to enjoy breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. In that area, even in other areas of life, things just open up now for you in the name of Jesus. Because we have a dimension of intercession called warfare. We fight. Hallelujah. We fight in the name of Jesus. We fight. We are engaged in spiritual warfare against the enemy and his strategy on behalf of the people, on behalf of the city, on behalf of the family, in the name of Jesus. When your family is going through some cycle you don't understand, it is a call to action. What is the action? Inquire from the Lord when you have a strategy, when you have a word, when you have a revelation. Go into battle and fight. Because the enemy is there to steal, to kill, and to destroy. It will be painful for you to see it and to see everything destroyed, everything killed, everything vanishes under your watch while you heard the revelation. He have to rise up and fight. I am fighting for my career. I don't understand why when it's time for promotion, I'm being overlooked. Year one, year two, year three. Lord, I keep on being overlooked. I am observing it is a pattern. Because one of the intelligence, spiritual intelligence that you should have is observing patterns, observing cycles. When patterns are negative, when cycle, reoccurring cycle, negative reoccurring cycle are happening, the realm of the spirit, he is telling you there is an evil hand behind it. When is a negative cycle? You understand negative cycle? There was a, a gentleman uh, we related with at one stage. There was a negative cycle in their family. Nobody reaches 50. It is reoccurring, reoccurring, reoccurring. When he, he reaches 50, the next week he died. Ask my wife, he died. Was he sick? No, he was not sick. He came there, he was talking to my sister. Blah, blah. He said, I'm, uh, I feel a bit exhausted. Let me go home and catch a nap. I will see you guys tomorrow. When he went home, he talked to the children, to the wife. He said, I'm tired, let me catch a nap. That's how he died. He was not sick. He has reached the cycle. And the cycle will continue until somebody rises to fight. The pattern will continue until somebody rises and fight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please, as we mature as Christians, you need to know you are a fighter. You are a warrior. You are a person involved in battle. There is battle to be fought. And when the breakthrough happens, you will begin to enjoy. And the thing is, if it was a family pattern that has been broken by you and its influence over your life, your children benefit. In the name of Jesus. Because I know for sure the battle we fought that came from a bloodline that we have overcome. So we will not fight that. Because you already said, this is now you confess the scripture because you are enjoying. The pattern was coming from us. From here, it has stopped. A new pattern has to emerge. But this emergence of the new pattern, it does not just come by wishing it. Hallelujah. You don't wish. It's good to wish, but if you stay at wishing level, unfortunately, the pattern will continue. And when you are not on earth, you are in heaven with the Lord, but on earth, it will struggle. 
Hey, we are fighting. We are fighting. Please, a homework scripture. Jeremiah 51, verse 20 to 23. You are my battle axe and weapons of war. Go and see how now you must go and utilize this. In the name of him. You, Jeremiah 51, verse 20, 23. It's not there on the screen. Hence, it's a homework scripture. You are my battle axe, weapon of war. For what? To go and battle, you conquer. Bring down the horsemen. Bring back, the, bring down the chariot. Bring down the work of darkness. So that you rise in your family and fulfill God's purposes. And when many people see, why are you rising when nobody else has risen in our family? We want what you know. And they come to know the Lord in the name of Jesus. David says in Psalms 144 verse 1, <laughs> Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hand for war and my fingers for battle. <laughs> 144, 144 verse 1, in the name of Jesus, who trains my hand for war and my fingers for battle. They fought physically. We are fighting spiritually. 144 verse 1. In the name of Jesus. Here's another dimension. And this one can come when it's negative about somebody. Please turn and pray because there is already a grace from the Lord in that season for you to be able to fight. Because not to lie to you, spiritual battles, they can be tiring. But when God is training you and bring a revelation about this, this is a planning attack against this one. You have to respond because the grace is there. That's why among the six billion people on planet Earth concerning this person, God chooses to reveal it to you. It means there is also sufficient grace. When you yield to that, I'm telling you, your own matters that you overlook will be attended to. Because you have partnered with God in this assignment to fight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My last scripture we pray in Jesus' name, Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 13. Nehemiah is rebuilding the war. You are rebuilding the family. You are putting things together. But there is some Balak, there is Tobias who are wanting to resist that. Therefore, Nehemiah is the leader. I position men beyond the, the lower part of the wall at the opening. And I set yeah, beyond the opening. And I set the people according to their families with sweets, with pancakes, with muffins. Drawing your attention. With what? With their sword, their spear, and their bows. Those are weapons. So that it is fight in the name of Jesus. 14. And I looked and I rose and said to the nobles, to the leaders, to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome. And fight for your brethren, for your sons, your daughters, your wives, your houses. Fight. Don't negotiate. Hallelujah. The only language the devil understands is violence. Spiritual violence. You can't negotiate. You can't buy him out. He's not looking for money. You can't buy him a Lamborghini. He's not looking for a car. You, ca you can't negotiate. We have to fight. The intention of the enemy is to counter anything that is of God. You are of God. You are the enemy's target. And the language you will understand is violence. Spiritual violence. It utilizing your Christian authority given to you by the Lord. To against the work of darkness, the spiritual authority over the power of darkness so that the breakthroughs are released in the name of Jesus. So somebody's life is saved in the name of Jesus. And the battle, please, may not take one week. 
Hallelujah. I am saying this so that if you have fasted for three days and, and then wake up on day number four, you will wake up the battles that even maybe more intense. Hallelujah. Even more intense. We are here. We are fighting my wife. We are, the battles become more intense. The more we fight, the more intensity. Will you give up? No, you are in the battlefield. In the name of Jesus. And my wife always say, it's, it's more darker before daybreak. The more the intensity of the battle, please, the information that must be positive in the intensity of the battle, the more you pray, the harder the battle becomes. Is spiritual communication to you. Look what you are doing in the realm of the spirit. Because when you fight, you fight and there is no response. He may Everyone is protected. My focus is on this matter. This pattern has to come to an end. This cycle has to come to an end. As from me going down, a godly pattern has now been established in the name of Jesus. That is my focus. I don't want to be diverted by cattle blowing. I don't want to be diverted by this not happening. I want to focus. I don't want to be diverted. I'm at work. Everyone is irritating me. Please read the language on the wall. What is the language? We are wanting you to divert. Why if you have not declared prayer and fasting, everyone at work, they are friendly. The day is 14 days of prayer and fasting. You are in day number four. Everyone is irritating you at work. Read the language in the spirit. He is, we are wanting to shift your attention because your pressure is too much. Now, if you are not careful, you will fall into the irritation. After 14 days, you realize, anyway, I wonder why we were you are irritating me. But by that time, your focus has shifted on the matter you are praying about. Read languages, spiritual languages, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. As God is maturing you, he is going to bring revelation. We are going to pray now. Please pray for revelations from the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Let your spirit begin to receive divine communication with clarity. Because this is empowerment for you. So that when God reveals something positive about your work, you dwell on that matter because it's, something is about to happen. In the name of Jesus. When it's negative, be a watchman. Intercept it from coming to pass. Because you are receiving vital information from afar before that thing comes to pass. Intercept it. Cancel it from coming to pass in the name of Jesus. When you are in battle, warfare, Lord, whatever is going on and they have been going on in my family, which strategy must I utilize? That's why you will come to church. I'm preaching like this. There is something that hits you. Am I? Though there are other people, it touches your heart. God is saying, this is the strategy you utilize. Then you're going to battle with that strategy until there is breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Prophetic intercession, you are birthing things in the physical. A watchman, you are canceling those things from manifesting. Prophetic intercession, you are birthing destinies. As a watchman, you are protecting destinies in the name of Oh, Jesus. Let us pray. And there's one scripture. Please put it for me as we pray. It, uh, it's Acts chapter 2 verse 1. It has come yesterday. It has come here every time we pray. I pray. Let us pray that by the Holy Spirit, your ears will be sharpened to hear. Your eyes will be sharpened to see so that you are not blind. Remember to walk here by the blindness I'm talking about, or the deafness is on spiritual matters, then you will start only using logic. Hallelujah. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all...
I don't know one, which verse. The response by Peter, that the verse I'm looking for, here in Acts chapter 2. In the name of Jesus. Verse 17. Thank you. It's come to pass in the latter days, says God, what Joel prophesied, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. When we prophesy, it does not mean we are prophet. It's just a gift. Prophet is an office. And every born again past believer can prophesy. He's speaking forth the counsel of God. That in a short to say to prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. It does not mean only when you are young you will see a vision. When you are old you will dream dreams. It's a language to cover all flesh. Remember, it shall come to pass in the latter day. I will pour my spirit on all flesh. So all is trying to cover. To dreams, visions will come to pass. Divine communication. Hearing the audible voice of God. My other scripture, Proverbs 20, writing just down, verse 12. A hearing ear and a seeing eye. The Lord grant you that. And the last prayer. May the Lord grant you warfare strategies. How to overcome, how to overcome a specific battle you are facing and release a breakthrough in the name of Jesus. That is the prayer. Please begin to pray those prayers. Father, in the name of Jesus, by the Spirit of the Lord, we ask you, Lord, for the grace, O oh God, of prayer and intercession. We ask that the Lord will visit his people, spirit of the living God, and grant them direction and give them divine communications. Father, through prophecy, through dreams, through visions, through scriptures, specific scripture, through Bible characters to identify with in a particular season and take after their strategy and apply it and obtain a victory in the name of Jesus. I pray for that grace upon every individual person here. Sharpen their hearing, sharpen their seeing. Let them have a sense of sin a sensitive spirit to the leading of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Let them not just sleep and, and forget dreams. I rebuke the spirit of forgetfulness. You had a dream, it was so real, but when you wake up, you forget. I rebuke that attack in Jesus' name. That spiritual intelligence from the Lord into your life will not be forgotten, will not be stolen by the enemy in the name of Jesus. I pray for clarity of dreams. I pray for clarity of vision. I pray for clarity in the hearing the voice of God. I pray for strategies from the Lord to live a victorious life and release a breakthrough. Strategy to fight and conquer. Strategy to fight and win. Strategy to go into battle and emerge victorious in the name of Jesus because you are not alone. The Lord is on your side in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for that grace upon every individual life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, somebody say, Amen.